medieval Cambodian city of Angkor combined physical and spiritual grandeur. For centuries, much of it stood hidden, cloaked by dense jungle undergrowth. Early this century, French archaeologists began working to restore some of Angkor's former glory. Nearly 70 years later, that came to an end with Indochina's war. Troops replaced researchers. Although the troops remain, restoration work has begun once more. But now there are added problems. In a once fashionable street of Phnom Penh stands a building where a group of Cambodian families are now squatting. It was, until the early 1970s, the local headquarters of the École Française d'Extrême Orient, the French organization responsible for the archaeological work at Angkor. One of those working in Cambodia at the time, and now back in Paris, is Francois Bizot. He says it was Vietnamese military incursions that brought an end to his work. Début 72. At the beginning of 1972, well, the difficulties really started at the end of 1971, January 1972, February 1972. The situation became absolutely... Well, the, the working conditions didn't allow us to carry on. The French experts had to stop going to Angkor. Seventeen years later, parts of Angkor are beginning to lose hundreds of years of grime. Now, with Indian expertise, a team of local workers has begun the painstaking task of cleaning the stonework and restoring those pieces that have been damaged. There's an added problem for the Indian experts. When the French left, they did so in a great hurry. Many of their excavations were simply covered with earth to provide a basic protection against the elements. Temples had been taken apart. The aim was to lay concrete foundations and then piece them back together again. The work was never completed, and the French haven't been invited back by the Cambodians to help with the current restoration. The chief Indian archaeologist says he has no master picture to help him put together the jigsaw puzzle. For example, now, uh, the Eastern Gallery in this particular monument, uh, uh, they have dismantled the entire gallery. And after that, of course, they had to leave this country. Now. Nayal says that identifying the pieces and putting them back together again is virtually impossible because the French took their plans with them. However, another French archaeologist, Bruno Dagan, who worked at Angkor for 10 years, says the Indians are overstating the problems of reconstructing the temples. I think that sufficient precautions were taken, particularly the systematic marking of the stones the numbering of the stones which were engraved at the back so they could not be erased. That should not pose any problems, nor complicate anything. It's just like a, a child's construction kit. Even more so because the stones have been put to one side in order. Uh, and from what I could see when I went there in 1985, nothing had been touched. The big equipment for cutting stones had disappeared but the stones themselves hadn't been touched. The French say they have no idea where the original plans are. They've disappeared. Certainly, some might feel that it's not in their best interest to find them while it's an Indian rather than French archaeological team that's being invited to carry out the work at Angkor. What it does mean, though, is that restoration work at the medieval site is being slowed, if not hampered, by poor relations between Phnom Penh and Paris. What most who haven't been to Angkor don't realize is the vast scale of the site. The word Angkor means the city or the capital, and certainly during its most glorious period, it had no match. It covered an area of some 320 square kilometers of fertile plain. Water buffalo now graze in what remains of the once sophisticated irrigation system. A series of lakes and connecting canals helped in controlling the vagaries of monsoon rains and drought. As many as three rice harvests were possible within the one year, enough to feed a population of over one million people. However, early in the 15th century, the local Khmer people suffered military defeat at the hands of the Siamese. Angkor was abandoned. Five and a half centuries later, 
the city bears the marks of a later invading army. The tourists who flocked to Angkor in the 60s no longer come. Airports stand deserted. Political upheaval in the region first made it impossible and then difficult to travel to Cambodia. With no one to hold it back, the jungle returned to hide Angkor's secrets, much as it had before the arrival of explorers early this century. When the French explorer Henri Mouot made the rediscovery of Angkor in 1860, he had little idea of the huge wealth of archaeological material that surrounded him in the dense jungle. That was not to be realized until some 80 years later, when, with the help of aircraft, the area was surveyed. People began to realize that there was more to the city than the famous Angkor Wat temple. Eventually, the French had a thousand people working at Angkor under the leadership of Bernard Philippe Groslier. He had to leave with the rest of the archaeologists in 1972. After 13 years of policy battles with the French Foreign Office, Groslier died a bitter man, having never returned to Angkor. For him, time had run out. For Angkor, time has stopped. But having been disturbed, past glories may disappear forever as nature takes its toll and if present problems can't be resolved.